The Theosophical Society, um, Hinduism, the Greek mysteries are all, for the most part, evil. And, and let me explain why. Man naturally wants to use his positions of power to get his way, and that includes sexually. You see that even in the church. But the doctrine in the church makes it harder for them to do this. The doctrines of the Greek secret societies make it easy for them to do this because engaging in orgies and having naked women do rituals are part of the Greek secret societies. Now, you'll hear people who say, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about, or that's bullshit. Let them prove otherwise. They won't be able to. I don't have time to get into it. But if you really look at the symbolism of the Greek secret societies, I mean, it doesn't take one very long to realize that I'm right. Um, if you look at Hinduism, um, recently in the news, it was, uh, let me look, I think it was Bikram's. Bikram Yoga founder reacts to sexual assault allegations. And he, one of the victims claimed that he used his position um, to say that if you want to win the yoga contest or some yoga contest, that you have to have sex with them. And that it won't be possible for her to win without having sex with them. And that he knew her from a past life. This is also what homosexuals will use. They'll say, oh, you know, I was a woman in my last life and you were my husband. And they will use that to try to, you know, get people to go along with. And they'll use their position to power. You know, it all, it all goes back to psychology and um, psychiatry being used to discredit the victims in many cases. And... But this video, I'm going to stick to um, the, the thoughts, okay? And um, get, getting this from Wiki, Wikipedia, the, basically the original Theosophical Society, which is founded by a mystic named Madame Vlatsky, who was a very evil, wicked woman. One look at her, I think you would have no doubt in your mind. This is a very wicked woman. Um, a witch comes to mind when I think of her. She's into the cult. She studies different religions. She puts her own twist on it. So basically, um, you had one group in India, which is one of the major groups, and another group in Pasadena, California. And if you look into psychology today and psychiatry today and mental health, they, they use a lot of uh, mindfulness training, which comes from, um, really it comes from Eastern thought. And really it comes from these secret societies, such as the Theosophical Society, the Freemasons, the Eastern Star, what have you. You know, even the um, OTO, uh, Aleister Crowley. If you really look at the history, you know, look at look at Cedar Reform School. It was started by a, a, a bunch of secret society guys in San Francisco. Okay, um, you really look at what what kind of place do we have in California? We have the occult, we have the Bohemian Club, we have some of the most extravagant uh, Freemasonic lodges right there in San Francisco, and Freemasonry, homosexuality, all the things that Christianity was at odds with, are. Um, in secret societies, the major secret societies of today, um, including some of the quote-unquote Christian secret societies. And the major um, adversary to these schools of thought and secret societies is Islam, because Christians tend to allow themselves to be corrupted by it as it's written in the Bible. It says the Babylonian mystery schools are going to overcome the church, not in those words, right there in Revelations. And that's what you see happening. But Islam takes a stand against it. They fight against it. They say, I'd rather die than give in to this. In Christianity, you have Romans 13, which says, you know, don't, don't fight the government. You know, and in other, or other verses say, if you rise against your enemies, I won't be with you, which allows for the secret societies to take over. So what is best for the soul, you know, is up for debate. But what is best for mankind, if you want to talk about separating uh, church and state and you know you talk want to talk about secularism even if you want to live in a secular world what is best for mankind is islam and there's no doubt about that they take a stand against evil like no other religion does and i've seen the people advocate in hinduism and and the greek and the theosophical society in a conservative magazine ironically and they said well uh, muslims have killed millions of um Indians over time since about uh, 1000 AD and that in one war particularly um, hundreds of thousands of Indian women were raped and I think it was 2.2 million Indians were killed now and they say oh, well it's because they're polytheists and this and that you know Islam historically has taken a very firm stand against sin um, I personally don't believe you should destroy 
relics. You know, you should forbid people from worshiping things, idols and, you know, pyramids and and statues. Yes, you should forbid people from worshiping them, but I don't believe that you should destroy them because they're part of history. You know, if anything, if you're really afraid of people worshiping them, you, could, you should lock them away somewhere, but don't destroy them. Anyway, that's just me. And there's, you know, Islam will, a lot of Muslims will teach otherwise. And again, it's up for debate. But I think what is not up for debate is that one of the most harmful um, religions are, you know, is uh, Hinduism. And especially because it relates to the secret societies. And they talk about, um, the Theosophical Society talks about world teachers and the Maitreya. And, and what you're talking about really is the New Age religion based on, you know, the, the Theosophical Society, which started in 1875. And officially in New York City. And then you get the York Riot of Freemasonry in New York. And a lot of people don't make these connections. You have to understand that there are two righteous religions in this world. Okay? And then one that's trailing behind. That is Islam and Christianity. And Judaism is trailing behind. Okay? The, these, are the, these are the religions that are right with God. You might say, who am I to say that? Well, I'm the top martial artist. And Buddhism and Hinduism, you know, have to do with martial arts type things. Yoga and Kung Fu, you know. And, and then there's Lamas who, who do a, a form of Eastern martial arts, Indian martial arts. I mean, so why was I able to beat them? Why, why are they afraid to accept my challenge? Why do I have nothing but victories against people of all races, creeds, and religions from all over the world? Because I'm closer to God than they are. And it's not because I'm, I was born gifted or who I'm related to because my dad's a brain surgeon because my, you know, I'm related to Daniel Boone or something. That's irrelevant. That doesn't matter in the slightest bit. It's because the way I think, I couldn't have cultivated this level of understanding and skills if it wasn't for the correct thought processes that go on in my mind every single day that has advanced my mind, body, and soul to such a high point that I'm looking down on the world. Wondering, why don't they simply change the way they think and become a great man like myself without flattering myself, without giving myself a big head? This is just how it is. You all can be great too if you follow the path of Christianity to its finish or if you follow the path of Islam to its finish. Now, what is best for the individual soul? I'm still debating that myself. I'm still, after all these months, I'm still yet to convert to Islam. But what is best for society, make no mistake, is a Muslim state. It's an Islamic state. It deals with the sinners like no other government in history has, like no other religion ever has. One should follow God or they should shut the fuck up. If you're going to be a complete infidel, liar, heathen, and use religions that allow for homosexuality and, and, and pedophilia to be rampant, then you should keep it to yourself. Really, you shouldn't do it at all, but if you're going to do it and you're going to take that horrible stance in life, shut the fuck up about it. Don't try to push it on the rest of us. Don't be in secret societies trying to manipulate the rest of us. Don't sneak it into psychiatry and psychology and try to force your inferior, feeble-minded view on the rest of us. Shame on you. You fucking faggots. You're sick. You people need help. And not make-believe help like you get from psychiatry and psychology. You need spiritual healing from Islam. Period. I've seen such inferior arguments, it makes me sick. It makes me so, so sick. Let's not forget that these are the people who could not debate the Christians when Christianity was on the rise because their view was inferior. They were witches. They were homosexuals. They were challenging God, just like the devil, just like Lilith. And a lot of these people look up to Lilith. A lot of these people worship the devil. A lot of these people use sorcery and call on medians and talk about they talk to their ancestors when they do not. They never have. They never will. You might feel your ancestors, but your ancestors are not talking to you. Make no mistake. And these are the same people who will put you in a psych ward if you say you hear voices. Irony, huh? Thank you.